Hey guys, what is going on? McMull2 here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm excited to bring you your first look at Rebel Officer Leo Organa, or Rolo as we like to call her. We're going to be testing her out in arena and territory battles. We'll go through and talk about whether or not she's good for arena. There's been some speculation about that. There's been a lot of belief that she's pretty good for territory battles, and that's where she's really going to be useful only. So we'll talk about all of that. But first, let's go ahead and break down how I have her modded, both for arena and for territory battles and other PvE content, and we will go from there. For Arena, I focused on speed for her mostly. You can see she's at 272 speed. She's going to do pretty good there. She has a base speed of 152, so she's already one of the faster characters in the game. Focusing on that speed is going to be helpful here because if she can go first out of the gate, you can use that Rebel Barrage, and that could give an ability block on the other team. That's going to help turn the tide in your favor really, really quickly. And then for PvE content, I really focus on stacking up her crit chance. That is going to be helpful because it means that she's going to be able to use her Rebel Barrage more often, and for territory battles, that is a big thing because all those ability blocks is really going to help control the opposing team. Plus the buff immunity on her basic, pretty helpful because it's going to be able to prevent taunts or buffs on the other team. And that's really going to make things easier for your team. So making sure you can stack up that crit chance to help her do her Rebel Barrage more often, it's going to be very helpful. And then stacking up some secondary potency again, also going to be useful because that can make sure that she will land her ability blocks and her buff immunity on her attacks. So starting off with Arena with Rebel Officer Leo Organa, let's talk about what's good with her. And first up, we have her basic attack. It applies buff immunity, and that is quite useful, especially when you're fighting against a tanky character or also fighting against a team that has R2-D2. If you can get that buff immunity out, that's going to be quite useful because you can then prevent R2-D2 from stealthing that character. And if you're also fighting someone like General Kenobi, that buff immunity is going to help prevent the constant taunting from Kenobi because then he's going to not be able to taunt every time an ally gets critically hit. So getting that buff immunity out really quickly is going to be helpful because then you're just going to be able to help focus down one of the opposing targets that could be quite threatening like a Zeta Han Solo or even a Commander Luke, anything like that. You could really help knock down really quickly with the buff immunity. So there is that. Additionally, you have Rebel Officer Leia Organa's Rebel Barrage ability and this attack does 10 hits and each character that's hit more than once suffers ability block for one turn. This is quite useful because you can use this right out of the gate and making sure that you can get at least a couple of ability blocks on the opposing team. That could really help turn the tide. Also, if you can get it on R2-D2, that's going to be useful because then he can't do his smoke screen right away. Then he's not going to be able to stealth everybody. You could really pick off one or two characters before they can really start to catch up. Using that in combination with her buff immunity on her basic is makes for a deadly combo here. But also, one thing that you can't state enough is that her Rebel Barrage ability cannot be countered. In a meta that focuses on counterattacks with the Commander Luke lead, this ability has some pretty good potential because anything that can't be countered is going to be a great way of applying damage without the fear of retribution. Additionally, if there is a combat analysis Zeta on the opposing R2-D2, making sure that they can't counter right away and then cleanse it, also going to be useful because then they're going to have to suffer through the ability block for the next turn, and that can't be stated about how good that is on of, in of itself. So having that ability that can't be countered and applies those ability blocks can be pretty good, especially if you use it right away. That's why I have Rebel Officer Leia Organa at such a high speed, is because I can use her Rebel Barrage right out of the gate and really making sure that you can get ability blocks on the opposing team. And finally, one other thing for Rolo that's good in Arena is her unique ability. It gives her bonus turn meter and stacking offense every time she resists a detrimental effect or suffers a debuff. Think of this sort of like a Kylo Ren in a way, where she can really start to stack up the damage and do a lot better. This could basically be dangerous if the enemy ignores her, but the fact that she has to rely on suffering debuffs or resisting detrimental effects like that is not really something you could look for. For Kylo Ren, he's already a tanky character, and every time he takes damage, he stacks up the offense. For Rolo, it's more every time she suffers a debuff. So you don't really have many debuff-heavy teams anymore in the meta. You have R2-D2, maybe old Ben, Nihilus is still around the meta. So there's a few characters that can do some debuffs, but it's not really heavy reliance on debuffs anymore. So there's really not going to be a lot of opportunities to really stack up this offense in the first place. But once they do start stacking up the debuffs on her, she could really start to do a lot of damage. 
And now focusing on the bad with Rebel Officer Leia Organa in Arena, the first main thing to talk about is that she relies a lot on critical hits. Every time she lands a critical hit, she gets a minus one cooldown on her Rebel Barrage. But in a meta like this, where you still have Threxus teams, and you're really starting to see a lot more General Kenobi Zeras teams, any team that relies on crits like this that doesn't have the damage to back it up can become a huge liability. She doesn't really hit hard on her basic or her AoE attack in the first place. So having that stacking offense could maybe offset that a bit but even then she's not gonna be able to apply the damage you're looking for and a general kenobi zeras fight as you can see she's not gonna be able to really do the damage and that's gonna become a huge liability because kenobi's gonna start healing for more than she's actually applying so that's a huge liability and also her rebel barrage ability there's a lot of rng behind it and that is also unreliable it does 10 random attacks to random enemies it's not split among everybody so you could get only two or three maybe even one target on the opposing team that gets hit more than once so there's no reliability with that and that could really hinder you with your ability blocks but also the ability blocks are not guaranteed so there's also the potency and tenacity check that you also have to go against and for general kenobi he is a huge counter to this because you can use a rebel barrage on the opposing team the first critical hit that lands on each character is going to pop the crit immunity from General Kenobi and then she's really not going to get a large amount of cooldown reductions for her next rebel barrage and then she's going to have to use her basic attack a bunch of times to get critical hits and maybe she suffers a debuff or two to get some cooldown reduction on rebel barrage but in the long run General Kenobi is a huge counter to her and General Kenobi is absolutely everywhere in the meta. Also as I've said before her damage is lacking. She has the unique Zeta to maybe make up for that a little bit but against uh, Zara's team like I said before her damage is not going to be enough she's going to heal more than she's actually going to damage so there is that and also her aoe attack you can see sometimes it does maybe four to five k on the attacks that could really stack up in something like territory battles which we'll cover here in a moment i promise but really for arena that damage on the aoe is a huge liability again against azara's team or any team really that's not a lot of damage in the long run so having to rely on the critical hits to use that attack often really makes her an unreliable arena character overall now i tried her leadership ability where rebel allies gain crit chance and tenacity and they gain turn meter whenever they suffer a debuff or resist a detrimental effect it does all right in arena it's nothing to write home about commander luke lead is still better you have your other rebel leads like wedge i could also do better so it's really nothing to really right home about it's not something you're going to want to use in arena but it does make things a little different i guess it adds some variation so if you want to try something different by all means use her rebel lead but otherwise i would not use her in the leadership position so in my opinion i would not use rollo in arena she becomes too much of a liability with reliance on critical hits and also the rng behind a rebel barrage is just not reliable enough that you could really count on it so really she's not going to become a good meta character in that regard this is something we already figured anyways when we saw her kit from the beginning she just doesn't have the kit to really make her good for arena if she could do more reliable ability blocks on her aoe then maybe she could have a place but right now she's not a good arena character now when comparing her to territory battles versus arena she shines a whole lot more in territory battles she's really good here she has a lot of anti-empire synergies as it is she has a leadership ability that really helps you endure debuffs from the opposing team and really overall she was built for territory battles we were all expecting that looking at her kit i can gladly confirm that is the case she is a really really good rebel character to have in your roster for territory battles so let's go ahead and break down what makes her so good so first up with her basic attack we talked about the buff immunity in arena and how it's useful there it is also really useful here in territory battles because she can use that buff immunity against a snow trooper commander who forces characters to taunt. Getting that buff immunity in is going to help prevent the forced taunts, allow you to really knock out the snow trooper commandos really quickly. And then of course there's also the secondary effect where she gains turn meter based on certain parameters, and one of those is 10% every time she attacks an empire target. Everything in territory battles is empire, so she's always going to gain that 10% and then another 10% automatically, so she's going to get 20% every time she uses her basic attack. That's pretty big in of itself, plus the buff immunity really makes this for a good basic attack in your combat missions for territory battles. And then also going to her Rebel Barrage, we talked about that before. Again here, Ability Block is going to be huge. 
everything in the combat missions uses abilities and getting those ability blocks in is really going to help things with making sure you can control the opposing team and that's really what it gets to in the later missions with the phases is that every battle needs to become more not you quickly killing things but more learning how to control them and keeping things stunned or dazed or ability blocked anything like that and this ability block is going to be huge here because now she's going to be able to really take one or two characters at least keep them ability blocked and then there's no crit immunity as well so she's going to be able to quickly use this a lot if you can really stack up her crit chance overall we'll talk about that more here in a moment you can really make sure she uses her rebel barrage a lot and that's going to be useful because those ability blocks can't be stated enough just how good they are for helping control characters like the probe droids or even the commanders anything that can use abilities that really help the empire become more dangerous if you can ability block those characters do you have really helped make the combat mission a whole lot easier for your team and then you have her leadership ability where she gives rebel allies 20% crit chance and tenacity each. That's also useful here in territory battles, but also the bonus turn meter whenever they suffer a debuff or resist a detrimental effect. That can't be stated enough just how good that is. Everybody knows that turn meter is king, so anything that could boost the turn meter, give you more speed, that is quite good because then you can really power through anything like target locks from the Imperial Probe Droids, the ability block from the Orwell Bombardment, anything like that you'll see here. They'll gain a lot of turn meter and they're really going faster. And of course, like I said before, speed is king. So anything that makes your team go more often, that is going to be quite useful in territory battles because again, you want to make sure that you're controlling the opposing team and those boosts of turn meter is really going to help you take advantage of their attacks and their debuffs. And that's what makes her leadership so good here is that she can make your rebel allies really deadly and making sure that they can take full advantage of any debuffs that are placed on them. And then finally, talking about other leadership abilities that she can synergize with, First up, you have your Wedge Leads, where Rebel Allies gain Turn Meter and Healing whenever they score a critical hit. If you could really stack up the crit chance on Rolo and then use her Rebel Barrage, if she can land all 10 critical hits with that attack, she could gain 100% Turn Meter right there. And then also, her basic attack, she could potentially gain 30% on her own, and then another 10% under a Wedge Lead with a critical hit. So you're talking 40% if she has the right parameters for that. That's also useful. So a Wedge Lead is really good for her. Also, it can't be stated, a Jin Lead is also quite good for rebel teams. I'm working on a video right now where I'm talking about how good Jin led rebel teams are in territory battles. So keep an eye out for that video here soon. But the exposes where they have a 50% chance to expose a target after applying a debuff during their turn, that expose cannot be resisted. And Rolo does a lot of debuffs on her own. You have the buff immunity on her basic, you have the ability block on her rebel barrage. So under a Jin led team, Rolo could be really useful there with all the exposes. That's really going to help boost up the damage. And then, of course, you have your Commander Luke teams where your Rebel allies have counter chance and bonus offense. Uh, Commander Luke led team is not so good for territory battles because countering is not something you want to really rely on. You want to make sure you damage the other team and take them out before they attack you. So a counter team does not do as well here, but she could still be useful there with the buff immunity and helping you with her more turn meter. So she could also be useful under Commander Luke led team, but I don't recommend you use a Commander Luke led team for your territory battles as it is. But yeah, guys, that is pretty much it for this video. If you all have any questions, feel free to ask down below in the comment section. I'll do what I can to answer them. Them. I hope you guys are having good luck in your territory battles so far this week. Hope you guys are making your way towards 45 stars. I know we're trying to go for that as well. But as always, guys, good luck in your territory battles, and I will talk to you guys later.